Vasudha. Today I'm going to be talking about the Bernstein Vazirani algorithm. Before starting off with explaining about the algorithm, I'd like to ask you if you've ever tried to guess a random number which your friend thought of in her head. How many digits was the number and how many tries did you take? The Bernstein Vazirani problem is quite similar to this. We're given a black box and we're supposed to find out the secret key S which is a string of n number of binary digits. For example, it, it might look like this. We can give n number of tries, but the output is only either in 0 or 1. To approach this problem in the simplest way possible, we, can, we have to think in the most foolproof way. We can check every single digit at every single position to find out what it is. Since the possibilities are only two, either zero or one, we can try doing that. In this way, we have to use n number of tries to find out if there is a one or a zero at that position. For example, if there is a one at the first position, then the value of S1 would be one. If there is a zero at this position, in the secret key S, the value of S1 would be 0. Similarly, we have to check the second position and so on until the nth position. And all these digits put together and we have the secret key S. In this case, in this foolproof method, which is the classical way that to solve this problem, we have used n, used n number of queries. Well, it might happen that you might have guessed the number which your friend was holding in her head in less number of tries than the number of digits. You might have been in luck to find to guess the number. But you know what? If we use quantum mechanics and quantum computing, we can le use less number of tries. Maybe just one try to guess the number it is. Let's look at the Bernstein-Vazirani algorithm. Now, in this algorithm, we have an input state x that we provide to the black box and we let the black box change it to another state y on which we make our measurements to get our probabilities on what the value of s could be. Let me walk you through how the quantum algorithm is implemented. So here we have our circuit in which we've initialized um, n number of qubits to zero and we apply the Hadamard gate on all of them such that we get our input state which is an n part state. So we all know that the Hadamard gate takes the state zero to plus and one to minus and we also know that any state x this is the generalized way of how the Hadamard gate will change our state x. But this is only for one qubit. When we have n number of qubits, as we have over here, we can write our state as this, for example. When we apply a Hadamard gate on this state, which is meant to act on all the n qubits, we end up with this state. So the y takes us through all the possible values of, um, of all the states that we have. And then minus 1 power our string, input string that we have, times the state that we want. And all of this is the uh, coefficient of this state. So let's apply the, the transformation matrix of the black box. This, in short, could be written like this. Now this is the input state that we have that we're sending over here. Now the transformation matrix works in such a way that it's basically the function fs acting on the input state. And any state that goes through this ends up turning into this. Which basically means that we gain a phase whenever the value of s and x are 1. So this is our state. We take it through 
the unitary transformation, the black box, and then this is what we end up getting. To our n, this goes over all the possible values of states that we have, and we get this state dotted with the, the key that we have, and then this is for every state y. This is at the end of, of the unitary transformation that we have. This is the state that we have just before we apply the Hadamard gates. Now when we apply these Hadamard gates again, we will end up getting S, which is the secret key. We did all of this in just one try. So the quantum algorithm just needs to have one go, in which it enters these n qubits and then gets the final state as the key, and we can measure this key in our basis. We see the speed up between the classical programs and the quantum algorithms due to the fact that we, we are able to predict uh, the probabilities instead of determining the qubit. So I would say that the quantum algorithms are much more effic efficient and they take much less tries because of the fact that we are able to encode everything within the state that we are getting and we are able to read off that state and get some information which enables us to consider a lot more cases than the classical way. When we run this algorithm on a quantum computer, do we expect to get only one state as our answer? Well, there are some quantum errors which creep in and we would have to try more than once to get a result but it's definitely gonna be less than the number of tries required in the classical algorithm. Bernstein and Vazirani introduced the quantum complexity theory in 1994 and this was one of the algorithms which was within the BQP class of problems but outside of BPP. So this algorithm made us ask, is quantum computing actually better than our classical computing? I hope we reach a stage where quantum computing becomes easier to use and much more accessible than it is now so that we can get into our friends' heads and freak them out. Thank you so much for watching this video. <laughs>